Hi guys, it's Jane. I've been missing seeing you all in the shop and I'm excited to share some of the reads that I think are really perfect, particularly for this time in um, when many of us are isolated. So the first one I want to share with you is called The Authenticity Project. It's by Claire Pooley. Uh, this is not a usual book for me. It's probably a bit too neat in the way it's presented, but I think um, for something uplifting, it's a really great um, read for now. It is the idea of a man who he, in his past life, in his younger life, he was one that everybody knew who he was. As he aged and he lost his wife, he became a bit more invisible, he felt, and he um, even became reclusive. While he was in that reclusive state, he had a bit of an epiphany and realised that he hadn't been a very nice person when he was younger, even though he was quite famous. He then decided to set down some real honest truths into a book, a manuscript book, just a normal book, and um, he called it The Authenticity Project. He wrote these honest thoughts and then he left that book bravely in a cafe, anonymously. Somebody else found the book, read it, read his story, his innermost thoughts, and then they were inspired to write their own things. And it went on like this. She then left it for someone else to find and a few others found it. As I said, it's a little bit neat in the way it wraps up for my liking, but I did still find it a great read. Think of it like a rom-com. It was great, really uplifting, and you know, who doesn't need a bit more of authenticity in this stage of life? Another one that I think is incredible for this time is um, Phosphorescence by Julia Baird. This book is incredible even just to hold in your hands. The production of it is beautiful. What's extraordinary about this book is the byline on awe, wonder and things that sustain you when the world goes dark. Now, it's quite incredible, really, that this book has come out in this time period. Julia wouldn't have known it. She's been working on this for years, obviously, but it's just hit the market at a time when the world has certainly gone dark. This is, for me, a, a testimony of a strong woman who has really come to understand how to find contentment when things don't go necessarily as planned. And for anyone who has lived, they know that things don't necessarily go as planned. But this is about finding meaning in the small things. Um, one of the things that's fabulous about this is talking about ocean swimming, and that's a new love for me. So um, it's really resonated. And I think there's lots in this that would resonate with um, most people. A beautiful, beautiful read. My next book is actually um, a bit tragic and I know that sometimes sadness is not a thing that people want to do during a time like this but I actually um, found this read just achingly beautiful. It is the fictionalised story of the son of William Shakespeare. So Shakespeare had three children, two of whom were twins, and Hamnet, one of the twins, died when he was 11. So that's a true fact that we know. What Maggie O'Farrell has done is fictionalise the story around that, and in particular, the relationship between William Shakespeare and his wife, Anne Hathaway. In the book, she's known as Agnes, which is what her father uh, wrote on his will, he called her Agnes, so it seems that names are sometimes a little bit interchangeable in those days. I found as a mother this was particularly um, beautifully written as the child dies and she has to, you know, lay out the body and everything. It's just beautiful descriptions and um, I did weep, but you know, I don't think that's a terrible thing. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. Uh, one, a quirky one. Uh, this is a Japanese one. The Japanese are often quite quirky. It's been translated originally from Japanese called Before the Coffee Gets Cold. It's a really unique little coffee shop in the basement in um, just a back street in Tokyo where you can go and you can sit at one particular table and you can travel back in time. There are rules that surround this travel and you can only stay at that table and you have to drink your coffee before it goes cold so that you can return to the present. Very quirky. It's almost like four individual stories that are entwined. I really enjoyed this.
And last, but certainly not least, is Normal People. You may have seen that this has recently been released on Stan as a television series. Promise me you will read it first. This is a beautiful book, a story of a relationship between a boy and a girl. It's a really um, a funny thing because when you talk about the premise of this book, it almost sounds like a home and away plot. And yet it's so different from that. It's boy meets girl at high school. They're from very different groups, it's different socioeconomic backgrounds, and they have a secret friendship. And it goes on from there. It is um, beautifully told, it's very raw, it's very real, and they're the things that I loved about it. Um, I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you do read it before you watch it, but I will say that the TV series has actually been beautiful as well. It's always scary when a favourite book is turned into a TV series. You sort of watch the first bit thinking, oh no, is it going to be terrible? But they actually nailed it and I've loved it almost as much as I love the book. Bye for now. See you next time.